trendy. You're wealthy. You got degrees, but there's somebody who doesn't have any of that. Who needs to speak into your life that you live. This month, we're inviting you for next month to enter into a season of fasting and prayer. We have our prayer guide and you know, there's things we want you to pray about for the church. There's some things we're having in the meeting. But here's, here's what I want you to focus on as we're praying and fasting next month. Is I want you to pray for a heart for discipleship. Who is God calling you to disciple? And who is God calling someone else to disciple you? Church is great. I like coming to church. I hope you like coming to church. But as I've said so for several months, growing spiritually is more than about coming every week and hearing a message or watching it online. It's just not enough. We need people in our lives who are helping us to grow. Now, the way this goes, I mean, you can't just thrust yourself into somebody's life, especially if you don't know them. But here's what I'm going to invite you to. As we're praying and fasting next month, I just want you to have the Lord open up your heart to who you might begin to pray for. Right? They may not be somebody who's ready to just have lunch with you all the time and hang out with you all the time, but God may put someone on your heart to say, I'm going to pray for them. In fact, I may go up to them and say, how can I pray for you this week? How can I pray for you this week? And as that in that time of prayer, God may be shaping your heart and their heart to be open for more connection. Because believe it or not, they need more than my teaching on Sunday. They need to see a real person. Not that I'm not a real person, but seeing me on stage is not enough. They need to see a person who's living life, goes through ups and downs, but love Jesus. And you may not be perfect, but they need to see somebody imperfect moving toward the perfection that's in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. I'm practicing too. I don't have it all together. Just come with me. You know, I'm a saxophone player, and one of the there was an instance in which I was seeking uh, the uh, the tutoring of, a, of another saxophone player, and he said, well, I don't have much time, but you can just come practice with me. I'm going to be practicing anyway. I'm going to be working on my scales. Just come work on your scales with me. He was already practicing. You're already moving toward in the things of God. Why can't somebody walk with you? There is no shortage of people who want people to speak into their lives. And I'm telling you, you may not be a minister. You may not have a degree. You may not even think you know the Bible that way. But there's somebody's life will be transformed just because you said, I'm going to pray for you. That might be a person who thought nobody cared and nobody's listening. But if next month if we give ourselves to pray and fast or how we can invest in other people's lives, and how we can allow other people to speak into our lives. Next year, we're going to launch all kinds of different formal programs for midweek experiences and small groups, and we're going to hire staff, and we're going to be raising money, but none of that means anything if our hearts aren't prepared to disciple people. You can't hire that. You can't hide that. Church has to be more than high and by. It has to be more than like, it can't be like going to a theater where there's a bunch of people in the room.